Hey everyone, this is my dog Carbon. He's part lab, part poodle, and an important part of our family. He was named by my five-year-old. You might think that if you let the kids name the dog, you'll get something like... Peanut butter. Or... Fluffy. But when we were thinking of a name, my son said... How about we name him Carbon Fiber? This might seem like a weird thing for a five-year-old to say, but that's because one of my hobbies at home is making things out of carbon composite. The kids are like sponges and love to watch and learn whatever it is that I'm doing. Anyway, the more we thought about the name carbon, the more we liked it, especially the science nerds like me. You see, carbon atoms can easily form four covalent bonds, and there happen to be four members of our family, and carbon really is the element that holds living things together. Anyways, the name stuck. Ever since we brought him home, I've had the idea to make him a name tag out of carbon fiber. To tie in the organic chemistry, I came up with this design in the shape of a benzene ring, modeled using Fusion 360. It's 32 millimeters in diameter and has a text relief that is 0.75 millimeters below the surface. The name on the front is fairly large, but there are three lines of text on the back side that are only 4 millimeters in height. The challenge is to machine both sides of the tag and keep everything lined up. Two-sided machining can be done using a vise or a jig or other fixturing, but today I'll be using the index pin technique. The basic idea is that you machine holes in the stock and straight down into the spoil board. You can then place pins or dowels in the holes to keep the stock aligned when you flip it over. What I like to do is to model a second body that represents the stock. I made two holes to fit one quarter inch pins on either side of the tag. It's important that these are both the same distance from the center of the stock. Now, on to the cam settings. There are three cam setups, the indexing operation, the front side features, and the back side features. The first toolpath is a boring operation for the indexing pins. You can see that this cuts clear through the stock and down into the spoil board. The second path is also a boring operation to cut the hole for the tag, but the depth is limited to the bottom of the stock. There are two operations to cut the front side text, both using a 60 degree V-bit. The first is an engraving toolpath. In Fusion, the engraving toolpath will follow the outline of the selected feature and will raise the tool at the corners to give crisp edges at the surface. This allows you to engrave not just stick lettering, but whatever font you choose. Because the engraving operation follows the edges though, it can leave some islands of material in the center, depending on the size of the text and the angle of the tool. So, a second 2D pocketing operation is needed to clean up the floor of the text. Uh, because this is also cut using the V-bit, you need to adjust the amount of radial stock to leave, so the tool only cuts in the center of the letters. Now, it's important to note that for all the front side operations, we use a center zero reference point that is the center of the top of the stock. To program the backside machining, we need to change the zero reference as if we were flipping the stock. In this case, I will flip about the Y axis. So we again set our zero point at what is now the top center of the stock, but we will need to flip the X and the Z axes to make sure they are pointing in the right direction. There are only two operations on the backside. The first is again an engraving toolpath to cut the lettering. Because this text is so small, there's no need for a pocketing cleanup. The second operation is a 2D contour that cuts the final piece out of the stock. If we did everything right, you can see the tool cut right through the front side in the correct alignment. The stock is a plate of carbon fiber composite about 2 millimeters thick. I made it from scrap carbon fabric impregnated with epoxy resin under vacuum infusion. Using this technique, I can consistently get parts that have around a 60% fiber to resin ratio by volume. Not that this dog tag will see any sort of mechanical stress, but the infusion technique also gives me a glossy surface finish on the plate. You can see the whole process in some of my other videos. Before machining, I applied a few coats of paste wax to the surface of the stock to act as sort of a paint mask and prevent paint from sticking to the surface. The stock is secured to the spoil board with clamps. Uh, when cutting a small part from a big piece of stock, I, I like to use a piece of paper with the part drawn on it to help me decide where to cut from. You can see my practice cuts in the stock already, 
this one is going to be located in a place where the surface finish is best on both sides. I can zero my X and Y axes to the center of the paper and then use the probe to set the Z zero to the top of the stock. The first operation is cutting the pin holes. Remember that this cuts down into the spoil board. Next, I cut the hole for the tag. Then, after a tool change, I use the 60 degree bit to cut the front side lettering. Now that the front side is finished, I can flip the stock about the Y axis. I'm using some 1 quarter inch aluminum pins to align the upside down stock to the holes that were made in the spoil board. Then I can reapply the clamps and proceed to machine the backside. To finish the part, I apply a medium coat of white paint, which is easily wiped off of the surface because of the wax. I'm pleased with how this project came out. The text is clear and visible, and even the small lettering on the back is fairly crisp. I like how easy it is to use pins for two-sided machining. My customer, on the other hand, doesn't seem to care much of anything about his new tag, but he wears it well, and like him, it's one of a kind. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. Thanks for watching.